Hi there and welcome to this video. Yeah, the tail end of um, 2019 and the beginning of 2020 has been really interesting times for Nikon users and anyone who's looking at the Nikon range of cameras around the mirrorless and DSLRs. Nikon has been going through somewhat of a bit of a reinvention of its camera lines and the individual cameras over the last 18 to 24 months. And that's really culminated with the Z50 being launched in uh, 2019 and then the D780 being launched at the beginning of 2020. In previous videos I focused on the D780 and then a bit of a comparison between the Z50 and the Z6. And in this video today I wanted to try and bring those together and just look at where they're positioning the different cameras from the D780 through the Z6 and down to the Z50. There's a lot that brings them together. They're definitely a single family. A lot of functionality that's common. However, they're each very different in some areas. And therefore, as I've said in previous videos, they're clearly aimed at different markets. And this video is really aimed at helping you. If you're thinking about them, looking at comparing between them, trying to work out which matches your use case best, how you might want to think about them and compare and contrast them. So let's start with a very quick run through of some of the specs where there are similarities and differences and compare and contrast the different cameras. So let's start with price. And when I looked at the prices today, it's quite a wide variance between the prices for the different cameras. I've looked at just the camera body. Um, here in the UK, the D780 at the moment, because it's just been launched, is at around £2,200 for the camera body alone. The Z6 because it's been out for 18 months or so, is now dropped down to about £1,600. So quite a competitive price point for the Z6 body only there. And then the Z50 is retailing at around £800 for the um, body only. So you've got quite a spread there from 2200 for the D780 down to £800 for the Z50. Now there's obviously a difference. The D780 and the Z6 have full frame sensors, whereas the Z50 has an APS-C crop sensor in it. However, the reality when we look at the number of megapixels between the cameras, you know, the D780 and the Z6 have 25 megapixels and the APS-C um, sensor in the Z50 only has 21 megapixels. But the reality is there's very little difference in pixel count between the different cameras. That said, as you'll find the detail in my other videos between the specifics of the cameras, the, there is a difference in pixel size because and um, pixel area, which is most important for low light. Um, and there is a difference because obviously the crop sensor is a little bit smaller physically than the full frame sensor, which has an impact on those. If we then look at the other difference which swings the D780 out as being a bit of an outlier, that has the F mount built into it, whereas the Z6 and Z50 both have the Z mount. Now the issue there is that you can use on the Z6 and the Z50 the FTZ adapter which allows you to use previous F mount lenses, whereas on the D780 there isn't an adapter to use the Z mount lenses on the F mount on that camera. So there is a bit of a difference there. Now the other difference around the mount and the lenses is around the kind of image stabilization where the D780 and the Z50 both rely on VR, which is in the lenses. So you've got to have a VR lens married with the body to get image stabilization. Whereas the Z6 has in body image stabilization, IBIS, which allows you to put any lens on it and get some level of image stabilization, which is really quite useful. If we look at the weight and size of the bodies, then as I said in the videos, the Z6 is about a centimeter smaller um, on the main dimensions compared to the D780. And then the, the Z50 is about a centimeter smaller than the Z6. So there is a size and weight difference between the bodies. However, in real world use, you've got to look at what lenses you would put with the bodies to get the real comparison. And if you're gonna be using the Z6 and the D780, 
then you're likely to potentially use an f2.8 lens and therefore that reduces the differential between those two cameras. If however you are going to use the f4 lenses on the Z6 which is one of the real opportunities with the um, Z mount lenses the f4 versions are really cracking lenses and therefore a lot of people don't really need that f2.8 lens so it does give you a bit more differential in terms of weight when you marry it up with that 24-70 f4 on the Z6 compared to the D780 with the f2.8 um, f mount 2470. The real opportunity with the Z50 though is if you're happy with the slightly slower glass, the lenses that come with that camera, um, which you're going to have to have if you want VR and vibration reduction, um, then the there's a real benefit. You could have the Z50 with both the lenses that come with it, the 16 to 50 and the 50 to 250, and it's still lighter than the Z6 with the F4 2470. So some real benefits there, and if size and weight is your thing, then that may skew you towards the Z series cameras, either the Z6 or the Z50. When I look at the stills and video capabilities, if we start with the D780, I would say it's still primarily a stills camera. To use the real um, opportunity of video, you've got to use the LCD and live view, which is great in most situations. However, sometimes there is a benefit from using the viewfinder when you're using video and you can't really do that with the D780. Whereas the Z6 and Z50 are what I call true hybrid cameras. You can use all of the video capabilities either using the EVF or the LCD on the backs. So there is a, a bit of a differentiator there. So if you're really going to be looking at video and stills and using it, um, using your camera as a hybrid in a true hybrid way, then it does lean towards the Z series cameras. If we flip back the other way, then the Z50 isn't weather sealed, whereas both the Z6 and D780 are fully weather sealed and Nikon's weather sealing is really good from my experience. You know, I've taken my D850 and F-mount 2470, which are both weather sealed to Iceland and used them in um, an Atlantic storm where you've got driving sleety rain and winds of 85 miles an hour gusting towards you. And the camera did really well. So if you're the kind of photographer where capturing photos and video in any weather is important, then it's going to push you towards the D780 and the Z6 without a doubt. Uh, whilst the Z50 will probably cope with moisture and drizzle, it wouldn't necessarily hold up in those sort of Icelandic type conditions. Equally, if you're going to be doing that kind of photography, then you may well want faster glass to get the um, slightly higher performance envelope of an f2.8 um, lens, for example. And really, the D780, the Z6 are where you're going to put your money if you want to be in that kind of space. The lenses that come with the Z50 are a little slower. They're still great lenses. And you could always marry the Z50 up with one of the faster glass Z series um, S-line lenses such as the 2470 f2.8. The sensor would only be using the center of that glass. So with something like the 50mm f1.8, which is notoriously sharp already, you're going to get an immensely sharp image. However, the balance with the lighter camera body may be an issue. If you're looking for the ultimate battery life, then the D780 is going to be the way to go because as we found with Nikon DSLRs, you're going to get about 2,000 odd shots potentially out of one battery. Whereas the real world with the Z6 and the Z50, you're probably going to be at around 800 to 1,100 shots. Still pretty respectable and better than the spec sheet, but it's not going to be up at that 2,000 shots, which if you're shooting weddings or you're shooting a lot of shots in the day and you don't want to keep changing the battery and you haven't got the time to recharge the batteries, you know, the D780, the DSLRs are going to be the way to go. 
Final one we're going to look at is the infamous card slots. Obviously, if a dual card slot is what you're looking for and what you really need, then the D780 is the only way to go. The Z6 obviously has the XQD card, which is a much faster read and write um, capability card. And I think the reliability is going to be slightly better than an SD card. Um, and then the Z50 is a single SD card. So more than capable for recording 4K video if you marry it with a higher end um, SD card. But as I said, if you're looking for a dual card, then the D780 is the only one that really works in that space. So that's a quick run through of some of the key um, spec areas and my thoughts on, on what they mean for different users. So let's now take a look at each of the cameras and look at the pros and cons and the different use cases that they're going to be tailored to. So let's start with the D780. Now, I would say this is really pitched at someone who's probably an existing Nikon um, user. They've probably got a D750 that they might be looking to replace. It may be they're looking for a second um, body to marry up with a D850 where they're perhaps looking for better video capabilities. Either way, that kind of user, you're going to have quite a collection of F-mount glass already and probably some of the faster glass. Um, because one of the challenges I've heard in talking to other um, users is the concern that moving to the Z series cameras um, is going to mean that they're going to want to also move perhaps towards the Z uh, mount glass as well. And when you marry up all of those costs, it's not just the cost of the body, it really the cost racks up when you're talking about fast glass. And that in the current um, market where you're perhaps a pro and the economics of photography are quite challenging these days. You can't afford to keep changing your whole kit on a regular basis and therefore you've got to think about it quite carefully. And the D780 does fit into that marketplace in really helping you get some of the functionality that's coming out of the mirrorless space whilst not having to trip over into refreshing your whole um, kit bag. So where the D780 really fits in is it's really still primarily a stills camera. However, the video capabilities have been given a refresh. And if you're happy using um, the LCD to unlock those capabilities, then that's going to be great for you. However, one thing to consider is the F-mount um, lenses are slightly noisier than the Z-mount lenses. And if you're doing video, and that was something that I found was an issue for me personally. If the dual card slot is a real issue for you, and there are some um, use cases where it really is important, then the D780 is really at the moment the only way to go. Although when we look at whatever the Z8 or Z9 potentially out in a couple of months, that will likely come with dual card slots as well. So another opportunity there. So let's now jump to the other end, the Z50. And when you look at the price point at £800 for the body, there are, have been some deals around which were about £1,000 for the body, plus both of the lenses, the 1650 and the 50 to 250. It's a really attractive price point, particularly if you're perhaps looking to move across from another brand into the um, Nikon ecosystem. For that price point, you get a lot of the functionality that's in the other cameras, plus, plus you get the Nikon quality, the Nikon ergonomics, and the menu system, which is really good as well. You get a true hybrid camera. Um, Nikon have done really well to clip a few of the um, functionality areas, but te they tend to be around the periphery. So in terms of core functionality, you're getting very much similar functionality to the Z6. You get the advantage of the size and weight. It really is an attractive package if you're looking to travel with it, um, but you don't want to be carrying um, a larger camera. Perhaps the capture of images and video is secondary to what you're doing. Perhaps you're looking to be um, moving around a lot. You're going to be doing a lot of hiking um, or Perhaps you need the benefit of the crop sensor, which is not something people talk about too much. 
The APS-C sensor has a 1.5 multiplier on it compared to the full frame sensor. And in some genres, that can be a real advantage. So for example, wildlife. Maybe you're out on a safari and you don't want to carry a um, 300 mil lens, which can be quite heavy for a full frame camera. The 50 to 250, when you multiply by 1.5, really gives you a 300 plus mil lens in a very light and compact package. So some real opportunities around the crop sensor um, in those situations. So all in all, Maybe for someone who's looking to join the Nikon ecosystem, someone who's looking to trade up from a DSLR um, that you've got that's already in the Nikon ecosystem, the price point for the Z50 is really attractive and it will look and feel familiar to you. So where does that leave the Z6? Well, it is a full frame um, sensor camera. And that does have its advantages, particularly when you marry it to some of the faster glass, either the f4 or the f2.8. It is a great low light camera and it's great for video, particularly if you're looking to record 4K. Um, it's a highly capable camera in a true hybrid style. Equally, if you're at the more pro end and you're looking to do ProRes RAW video, then the Z6 is your go-to camera. There is a small price increase to unlock that functionality, but compared to buying a pro level video camera from one of the other brands, it's a low price to pay. So perhaps if you're looking at moving from another brand to Nikon, then rather than dropping into a DSLR with an F mount lens, then the Z6 with the new Z mount glass could be the way to go for you. And of course, in doing that, you still have backward compatibility with the Z mount lenses with the FTZ adapter. And you do of course get the benefit of IBIS with the Z6 body. So hopefully this run through has given you some food for thought. If you're looking at um, which of these cameras you move to, whether you're joining the Nikon ecosystem or whether you're looking to trade up from an existing DSLR, or perhaps you're looking to move across from a DSLR to a mirrorless camera and the Z series. I hope you found this video useful. It was aimed at being a bit of a capstone video to the previous videos. There's a lot more detail in those videos. Um, so do go back and have a look at those. As I say, I hope you found this useful. If you did, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell below and you'll be notified of future videos. It would be great to hear in the comments below what you're looking at and what you think of these different cameras and Nikon's reinvention. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video.